for the first time, he's saying financially. Did you note that as something that perhaps was relevant? And if so, why, Professor Dershowitz? I did. And if I were cross-examining him, obviously, I'd pick up on that point. He wasn't involved financially. Tell us in what ways he was involved um, to uh, fill out the record. Uh, look, none of us knows all the facts. That's why I've always said that a special counsel should be appointed. A very distinguished, above-party politics person should look into the relationship between Hunter Biden and President Biden. There's smoke, but right now there's no fire. And I think the American public have a right to a nonpartisan investigation. They're not going to believe the results of a Republican-controlled House or a Democratic-controlled Senate. They know what the truth is. And an independent counsel, if that person is a person outside the system and with integrity, could bring about credibility to this problem, to this issue. And today we also have the impeachment inquiry vote, which is happening outside of Hunter. It just so happened to fall on the same day as the news cycle does go, 5 p.m. today. I want to play a little bit of Congressman James Comer, the chair of House Oversight, talking about why this is uh, important and the connection to Joe Biden himself. It's hard for me to believe, I'll speak for myself, that uh, all these oligarchs and the Chinese Communist Party were wiring Hunter Biden millions of dollars because they liked him because he added value to something. Your take on where we are at with the findings so far. Um, of course, Democrats say it's not damaging. They're saying the loan repayments for the car, even though it was from that Owasco PC account, they're just saying there's no there there, as they like to say. But what is your read as an expert in the law here and what the GOP House has uncovered? Well, both sides are overstating their position. Uh, the Democrats are wrong when they say there's, there's nothing here at all. Of course, there's plenty here. Obviously, Hunter Biden was hired not because of his expertise, but because of his access. Clearly, there's fault there. The question is, what did Joe Biden know? When did he know it? How much did he know? Uh, the Republicans seem to suggest that there's more than we've seen in the evidence. The Democrats suggest there's nothing there. My view is there's smoke, but, but I need to know whether the smoke is arson or whether there's a real fire. And that can be done largely through a nonpartisan investigation rather than a partisan investigation. We always know the outcome of a partisan investigation. We know that the Republicans will find them culpable, and that won't, that won't surprise anybody. But the documents at the end of the day, if there's black and white, you know, forensic uh, accounting yeah. here, that really would be the nail in the coffin, yeah. wouldn't it? It would be if there were unambiguous documents. But we have a check and it says on the bottom of it, repayment of loan. And one has to prove by whatever standard it is. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt uh, at this stage of the game that there is a, a connection and that payments were received by, quote, the big man. So far, that. That uh, has not been proved. It has been alleged. And that's why further investigation is warranted. But I think the further investigation would be better conducted by special counsel. If I were President Biden, I'd want a special counsel because I'd rather be investigated by a nonpartisan person, particularly if he's innocent, than by a very partisan Republican House of Representatives. The contempt of Congress uh, proceeding now against Hunter, as you said, a court would not uh, block that from happening. So how does that play out now? I mean, obviously, they knew the risk if he didn't go behind closed doors, that this would be happening, that they fully said, we're going to hold you in contempt of Congress. Does that ding him at all? Or how do they, they obviously were willing to take that risk and have him not go in behind closed doors? Yeah, well, his lawyer, Abby Lowell, made a decision and he agreed with the decision that he'd rather litigate this case um, than go behind closed doors and have his testimony selectively leaked, which, of course, and he's right about that. And um, But it's, it's impossible to know how a court will decide. And I don't know of any case where a court has been presented with the following issue. Yes, I'll comply with the subpoena, but only in public. I won't comply with the subpoena in private. It's a very interesting tactic that's being used, then it, it, it might conceivably result in some legal benefit. But generally, the courts say to the House, look, you conduct your business. Article one of the Constitution provides for you being a judge of your own business. We, Article three judges, we're not going to intervene. That's the most likely result.